Hey guys, Chili B here again. This time we're covering the monthly newsletter for November and pulling out some highlights. So KMAO starts off this newsletter with an October review and the first thing we see is that the rebranding is finally done. There was a slight delay so that they could get everything exactly how they wanted, but the rebranding, which was the top priority for the past month or so, is now totally ticked off, which is amazing to see. Website revamp is running a little late, probably because the rebranding was a bit late as well, but they're planning to push it out in two or three days, which is super soon. They've got a link to the beta page, which is here, and looking pretty fresh. It's a really different look than the old Lizard Lounge, um, but I'm loving the colors. I'm loving the responsiveness of the website, and this isn't even the final version, but it's looking really good so far. So pretty keen to see what they do over the next two, three days to tidy it all up and finish it off. So they say, just keep in mind, this isn't the finalized version. They've got something different in mind that they're still trying to make happen. And even beyond that, the website is continually growing. It's dynamic. They'll always be adding new features and they've already got some stuff planned for November. The deal flow application platform is also going to be coming out alongside the website. So that was always the plan. So it'll be good to see that in a couple of days as well. And probably the big news for this newsletter is that the staking LIP for version one is out. I've just done a video on that. You can check it out. I'll link it in the descriptions. In short, the proposal is a staking system that uses rebasing and what they call soft resets to encourage people to stake early as well as to encourage later users to stake as well. So it's beneficial for both. It's pretty interesting, so check out my other video or check out the LIP directly. So right now it's just a prelim LIP, but once the details get finalized, it'll be put out as a blog and we'll have the proper LIP to vote on as well. And the last part of the review section for October is the ETHLizards contributor program. The program has been live for a little while now. They've had lots of applications and they're still reviewing it behind the scenes, but some things have already happened. So the DAO contributors now, they say, are voting on which projects get approval for collabs and whitelists. And I think that's a good amount of progress for a short amount of time. They're taking load off the team, having to deal with and handle all of that and distributing it to DAO members that are keen to work on that sort of stuff. So that's a really good start to this program. And they're looking at ways to expand it beyond collabs and whitelists into game tournaments and other sorts of stuff. That'll be exciting to look out for. The second half of the newsletter is plans for November. And there's four big things that they've got going on for November. The first one under the heading of advisors, collabs and partnership onboarding. They've been reaching out to different people to help improve deal flow, governance and new products. That to me sounds like it's much more than just trying to get new projects to invest in. It's thinking about how to run the DAO and the community more efficiently in the background and setting up more structures to enable that, as well as thinking about what new products would add value to ETH Lizards. He mentions a special thanks to Rogier, Florian, and Andy for help in different ways across the past month, and ways specifically that aren't to do with deal flow. Because he mentions that here, I'm assuming this is the type of connections and the type of advisors and partnerships that they're trying to build behind the scenes to help ETH Lizards execute in every little part of what they're doing. The second big plan for November is additional website updates, which was mentioned a little while ago. They're going to be fleshing out the website with more information and dashboards. And again, like what they said before, the website's going to be dynamic and continually growing. And they make special mention that the aesthetic of the website it will be something that's worked on over time as well. The third thing for the month is developing staking. The description of the mechanism in the staking prelim LIP was hard enough to understand just conceptually. So I assume actually developing those mechanisms and testing it out, making sure there's no bugs is going to be quite a process. So I'll be looking forward to see what sort of progress the team makes over the month. The fourth major thing is governance. After a little pause on working on governance, they're now back to researching and ideating a basic governance structure to allow ETH Lizards to be a sustainable DAO. And they say, as always, they're going to be informed by best practices and it's going to come to the DAO for approval and final voting. Now touching on financials really briefly, the three mystery investments that we've been keeping track of through the other updates have all made progress. So investment A funds a cent, 
investment B, we're waiting to receive a saft, and investment C, we're waiting on some Alen pool stuff. They say there's more investment opportunities in the pipeline already and are expected to come to the investment council throughout November. But I guess information on this will remain pretty light because of NDAs and other reasons. But they say as soon as they're allowed to, the project specifics will be published for each investment. In regards to expenses and spending, the team is planning to cut down marketing expenses in our current bear market because marketing efforts in a bear market, they say, is pretty poor ROI. And maybe the more important thing to do right now is to reduce expenses, including marketing expenses and other overhead costs, to help maintain the project's runway. As part of that, the No Standing Partnership, who we've been working with in the past, has been changed and some services have been paused and others have been discontinued. But I want to make it really clear that it's not like all marketing efforts have stopped. It's just spending on marketing efforts has taken a pause while we're in the bear market. So other things like Twitter and collabs and AMAs and all those types of things which are low or no cost will continue to go ahead. But the more spendy things like engaging no standing to do more music videos or scavenger hunts or whatever are taking a pause. The stuff that's already been paid for will be delivered, but no more new things for the moment. And to me, that sounds like a good idea. I think you only want to market when you want eyes on you. And you only want eyes on you when you've got something to show. And right now we're in the process of building something really awesome to show, but we're not quite there yet. So in my opinion, it's a good move to pause on marketing spending and extend our runway. The newsletter finishes off with a message from K Mao, calls it a message for these times. And because this is a pretty short newsletter, I think I'll read it out in full because it's a good way to get into the team's head to understand what they're thinking and understand how they intend to get us to the point where we're the dominant GameFi and DeFi investment project. Okay, so let me read it out for you. Just close your eyes and imagine I'm KML. People are generally more restless and stressed during a bear market. Some people may be overinvested or struggling to deal with being in the red, while others are missing the glory days of NFT summer. You can see the impact of this across crypto Twitter and NFT discords. When you work in the fast-paced and constantly shifting landscape of Web3, sometimes there is no perfect way to move forward, especially in a DAO like ours that has such an intelligent but diverse community. Regardless of which path arises, or a choice that the team makes, there is always going to be discourse and some potential for missed opportunities. Debate is an essential part of business and governance. We love that the Lizards are very active in governance and pushing for constant improvements and changes, that this comes with a lot of pressure to be able to quickly deliver effective products. While it's impossible to accommodate everyone, we're confident that together we can establish solutions and developments that are beneficial for the DAO. We'd like to take a moment to reaffirm the ETH Lizards vision and how the team plans to deliver on this. Regardless of any debate or discussion, we'll always be able to work towards solutions that aim to align the major pillars of the DAO. The team, mods, contributors, advisors, investment council, governance, community members, and the DAO itself. ETH Lizards is an investment DAO. We do not rely on newcomers joining the protocol as a sole source of income, while royalties help to fund the monthly operational costs. The revenue and investments is the true end game. We're continuing to increase the flow of investment opportunities, and this will always be one of the primary focuses of the DAO. Selling a simple NFT PFP JPEG is a lot harder than selling a functional NFT with real utility behind it. The team's focus is to keep improving on that utility and providing real value to holders. After working in crypto for a long time, I've realized one important thing. Narratives win bull markets, products win bear markets. We appreciate your patience as we're working to deliver new and unseen concepts to the DAO. It doesn't matter if the rest of Web3 falls apart, the ETH Lizard's vision is clear and our mission remains the same, becoming a leading GameFi DeFi investment DAO. Offer top class NFT utility and continue bringing holder benefits to one of the best communities in Web3. 
So that's the highlights of the newsletter. Let's jump over to my spreadsheet and see how they're keeping track with deliverables. We'll just go from the top and work our way down. The website revamp and the deal flow application platform have both been delayed maybe by about a week or so. Their current new ETA is in two or three days. So I've put it in brown just because it's been delayed a little, but two or three days is actually not much in the scheme of things. A little bit lower, we've got governance being back in focus. So if we scroll back to the September mid-month update, we can see that they delayed work on a governance structure because at that time it just wasn't the top priority. What the top priority was, was marketing and the branding revamp. If we scroll back to today, we can see that the branding revamp is finally completed. I've put it in gold. And so sticking to their word and prioritizing well, I think, they've put governance back in focus now that the branding has been done. So it's fantastic to see one thing totally ticked off and to see another thing come back into focus when it's time for it to be in focus. So really good in my opinion. Staking, they last month said to expect the LIP out the week of the 24th of October and it came out just on time. So all green on this one as well. They're pretty much on schedule, which is fantastic. And then there's the community contributors program. There's no actual ETA on it. It seems like a program or a thing that's just going to be worked on consistently over time. But they've made a ton of progress on it over the past uh, month or so since early October when they first introduced it or first mentioned it. So lots of green here and I imagine they'll just chip away at this over the long term. And then looking at the investments right down the bottom, it looks like investment one funds have been sent, investment two they're waiting for a SAFT now and investment three they're finalising something with Aylin. So good progress on all of them, a slight delay on the second one because the original plan was investment incoming before the end of October. So we may be just a little bit behind there. So it's in brown, but overall in the big picture, it's pretty on time. Zooming out, there's a little bit of brown this week, but there's also some gold where they've totally ticked off an element. As always, looking pretty good and looking pretty green. And that's it for this update. If you found it helpful, leave me a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it and I'll catch you next time.